Hey, welcome to another Touch Designer tutorial. So today I'm going to show you how to do a video background cutout, kind of similar to what you would see on Zoom or Google Meets. Um, and I'll also go into showing you how to set that up to pipe any type of Touch Designer video into your meeting as well, if you want to do like a zo custom Zoom background or a custom Google Meet background. Um, the main way that this works is that we're actually going to be using a chroma key, which is a component that's used that's available in the palette. Uh, and it's normally used for green screens. Um, if you're on Windows or you have an NVIDIA graphics card, there's already a built-in tool for this. So if you look at the tops and you go into NVIDIA background, you can put that down, just take a video device in, select your video and pipe it in. But I'm on a Mac and I don't have an NVIDIA graphics card. So if either of those are the case for you, um, follow along and I'll show you how to do this custom setup. The other thing I'm doing here is I'm using a feedback loop to create a, kind of a soft glow around the cutout. But you can also do some fun things here. Um, for example, if I go in and like change the size of the scale or the level in this feedback loop, you can kind of make like an infinite tunnel effect. Um, you don't need this necessarily. Like I can just show you what it'll look like without it. We can just do like a regular cutout, um, but it adds a nice effect overall. So let's go ahead and build this from scratch. So the first thing that you'll actually need to do is download an application called mm -hmm, um, and it will run the cutout for you. So you'll notice that I'm getting this video feed from an mm -hmm camera. So let me switch applications. And this is what mm -hmm looks like once it's downloaded. And it's mainly used for presentations and it's available on Mac and PC, but I can like scale my video camera up and down. I can like fade myself. But the main thing that we want to do is actually, if you go into this tab right here called rooms, you can set these different backgrounds. And what we'll use this for is to make a fake green screen. So if I go to more rooms, I can scroll down to solid color. And here I selected this bright lime green. And then I've already added it, but go ahead and hit the plus button here, and it'll add it into your rooms on the side. So I'm going to scroll down. Here's Lime. I'm going to set this as my background. Um, and that's all we really need it for. So now I actually have a virtual camera with this cutout now. Um, so if I switch back over to Touch Designer, I'm going to delete everything, and we'll make this from scratch. But we'll start with a video device in. And I have available like my normal FaceTime camera, but then now I can also select this mm -hmm camera. And what we want to do now is get rid of this green background and uh, their logo. Sorry. Mm -hmm. But the way that we can do that is by using the chroma key. So if I go into the palette and I go into scroll down to tools, you'll notice over here chroma key. So we'll drop that down. And we'll go ahead and link it up or drag a wire to the first parameter. And out of the first one here, we'll drop a null. Um, and the way that we customize this, if you right click on this component and then you hit view, it'll pop up with this little custom viewer. And what we want to do is over here in source, we want to choose input one. And then in the test source, we'll also choose input one. And what this allows us to do is to select certain colors and then that will become transparent. So if I like start selecting on my face, you'll notice in this output image, it's like it's like removing all the that section of my face. But um, if we click on the background and just drag over that mm -hmm logo in the bottom corner, um, what it'll allow us to do is create a transparent mask. And I can go ahead and exit out of this, and you'll see we have this background. Um, it's a little. It's a little like gray around the edges here. I'm going to open it back up again. And you'll notice that there's this like shoulder spill. If I tone that back a little bit, uh, it will bring back some of the color here around my face. Um, there's also this kind of max spill width. You can you can play around with these parameters uh, to see what looks best. But it'll, it'll allow you to do some blending. Because you might get like some, if you actually have a green background behind you, you'll get like some green spill onto your shoulders. And so what it'll do is try to remove some of the color there. But since we aren't actually using a green screen, we can just try and keep all the color there. Um, I'll go ahead and close this. Effectively, right now, you have a, a fully functional green screen. If I just send this to an out, 
um, I can go ahead and enter perform mode and I have a full green screen background. Um, but what I do want to show you really quickly is just how to make that like tunnel effect uh, using feedback loop. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to keep the out all the way at the right, and I'm going to turn the background on so we can see it. And in order to see a black background, I'm going to insert an operator and do um, RGB key. And that's just a simple way to put a black background on everything. Um, and what we'll do here is we're going to make a feedback loop. And this is a way of taking the previous frames of video and overlaying it on um, kind of combining them together. And we can do a number of effects, a number of really cool effects, actually, with feedback loops. But we'll do a simple one today. So I'm going to start by placing in here. I'll insert an operator, and I'll do a feedback. And we're going to connect it to a level. And then we're going to connect this to an over. And the way this works is we actually want to put the over will take the, we want the newest incoming frame on top, and then we want the previous frame on the bottom. And then we connect this into our feedback loop. And we can already start to see that it's just like infinitely drawing. And I'll show you really quick, what, what does it look like if we have these mixed up? So now, well, the frame's not drawing on top. But basically, yeah, we're taking the our incoming newest frame, layering that on top. And we can do a lot of things with this uh, with the feedback here. So in the level, what I want to do is actually go into post, and I'll tone the opacity down a little bit. And now we're, now we're getting these previous frames. But they look, uh, look a little janky. So what we can do in here is insert a blur. And already, it starts to make it much softer. Um, and the way I think this gives us kind of a, if I, if I lower the opacity a little bit more, this will give us kind of like a nice soft edge with a bit of a delay. Um, I think this is great. I think th this is a good stopping point if you just want to be able to have like a soft edge on your background. Um, but if you want to make that tunnel effect, what we can do here is put in a transform. And we will take the previous frame and we'll scale it up slightly. So if I go in here and put the scale to like 0.01, point, or 1.01, you'll notice that the edges start to kind of expand out a little bit. I really like using this in rendering. So like here, instead of feeding our video in, if you are if you have like a render setup, I love to use this as kind of like a final post-processing effect because it gives you this like motion blur to everything. Um, but you can also make this tunnel effect if we just ramp up the scale by a bit more. So we'll do it by 0 0.1, 0 0.1, and then maybe put the level a little bit higher. And you have this crazy tunnel effect. And if you want to have less of the edges here, notice if I turn it down, I'll see all the individual slices. But if I increase the blur, I'll get these softer edges. Putting the filter size really high actually has a performance hit. So one thing that you can do is if you're going to ramp up the blur this much, I would recommend doing the pre-shrink by a level. Um, and now you get a nice soft edge. Uh, the other thing that you can play around with as well is like rotation. You can like take the original layer and like start to play around with like rotating in different directions. A uh, bunch of fun things you can do here. Um, lastly, okay, so how do we? I'm gonna I'm gonna bring the level back so we can just yeah. How about that? Perfect. Um, the last thing that I wanted to show you is how to then take this and pipe it into Zoom. So we want to make sure to have an out at the end of our network. Um, so that when we're in the project, we can actually see our back, our, our uh, words, uh, see like our what we've created. We can see our network, and so that way when we go into perform mode, we have everything set up. Um, there's another piece of software called OBS. It's Open Broadcast Studio. I'll put a link to both mm -hmm and OBS in the description. But if I open OBS up, um, this will. <laughs> I already have it set. This set of sources here, we can select a video input. And then similarly, we can create a virtual camera the same way that mm -hmm did. And then that will show up in your listed cameras for Zoom. So what I'll do here is I'm just going to add a display capture. Or actually, 
Mm, window capture. Because I want to just capture a specific window. And we'll, we'll call this like touch. We'll call this TD capture. We'll hit OK. And what window do we want? And we actually want this touch designer perform window. And you can see it's being captured right now. So I'll go ahead and hit OK. And it's not scaled correctly with our project. So I'll go ahead and take this and scale it to a size that's going to fit. And I'll just take the top part of this and um, make sure it fits the display. And then the last part, there's a bit of a delay because I'm recording, running touch designer, and all that good stuff. But um, if you hit start virtual camera right here, now we have a virtual camera that will show up in something like Zoom. So OK, we're going to go one layer deeper. <laughs> here's, here's Zoom. Uh, I'm going to make a new meeting for myself just so you can see. Join with computer audio. We're going to switch over our video settings. And instead of the FaceTime, there's OBS. There we go. Here is our custom background from Touch Designer. So you can put anything you want. You can run whatever project you want in Touch Designer, and you'll have this in Zoom. And the same thing goes for Meets, uh, Google Meet. You can uh, just select your video device. Cool. Hope this helped. Um, let me know if you have any questions in the comments. And um, I think if you enjoyed this video and you'd like to see more, the best way you can support this channel is just uh, subscribe, give it a like, share it. Um, thanks. Really enjoy your support. Let me know what you think.